Hey, it's me, Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. So I've been learning a lot about guns underwater, which is pretty cool. I mean, in the first video, I learned all about what's happening back here in the action. But the problem is, because of limitations in my setup, I didn't get to see what happened when the bullet exits and goes into the water. Now, I really want to see that, so I had to think about it for a while, and I had an aha moment. You see, instead of building an aquarium that was keeping the water in with the gun, I built this to keep the water out. But the problem is, even though I built all this cool stuff and got my hands on one of the best high-speed cameras on the market, I didn't have enough hands to run it all. So I invited some friends to help me. Huh? It's gonna work. Yeah? Yeah. Sickening good. I was hoping to get the widest view possible that we can get inside that inside that mirror. So we're gonna have to be as close to the mirror as possible with the wide lens. I think so. Otherwise we'll see the rig when we... I think so. What kind of lens do you think you're gonna use? Lens, so you're gonna be in the middle. So we should have a lens, shouldn't we? we? Should have a lens. <laughs> uh, the problem with doing an AK underwater is that I can't trigger the camera. So I've asked the slow mo guys to come help me. So uh, what are you gonna run? Run the Phantom V1610 today, which goes up to 18,000 frames a second at 720p. I can't count that high. <laughs> Definitely more than we've got fingers. Can you zip me? Unless you're from Alabama. Hey! All right, just to show you how cold it is when we're doing this, that's about 40 degrees, and it is cold. So the camera's gonna look into the top mirror, it's gonna bounce down, and then basically it's a periscope underwater. So we have the gun here. You can see it there with the fan on. All right, it has been very consistent. We're getting about five to six feet of bullet travel. Okay, so what did we just learn? You can see that there's gas that comes out right here. It's a little gas bubble. And the reason that's happening is because it's the piston is venting just when it gets past. <laughs> I can't talk, I'm freezing. As the bullet goes down the barrel, it passes this gas block and pushes gases against this piston. Now you can see it starts to move the bolt, but watch what happens right there. It opens up this little gas port. That's why there's a bubble right there during the shot. So if we take this off, you can see that the piston vents after it goes only about a quarter of an inch back. If you think about it, that's cool because this very short pressure impulse is enough to overcome all the springs and the friction in the weapon and cycle it simply due to inertial forces. Holy crap, that's cold. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. So now we're gonna do over the shoulder? Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Over the shoulder shot. All right. Now clear the load. Clear the load. Clear fire. Let's fire. Three, two, one. Weapon's clear. Whoa. Yeah. Did you get it? I got it. <laughs> I gotta check it.
I knew that was gonna be cool, but not that cool. Let me try to explain what I think is going on here. So we got this oscillation that you can see after the shot and the bubbles. That's awesome. I didn't understand why the bubble would start back up after it collapsed. But here's what's going on. There's an equation called the rayleigh plesset equation that describes everything a bubble does underwater. It's too hard to solve by hand. You gotta use computers to figure it out, but this is basically what's going on. At the initiation point, you have a super high pressure inside of a bubble and it begins to impart momentum to the fluid around it so it begins to grow. At some point, it passes the point where the pressure inside the bubble is equal to the pressure outside the bubble and it continues to grow until eventually the water stops it. Now at this point, you have low pressure inside and high pressure outside so it begins to collapse again. And because of fluid momentum, it goes again beyond that equilibrium point and begins to compress. So it gets a super high pressure on the inside again and boom, another shock wave and the process starts all over again. This oscillation occurs until you dissipate all the kinetic energy in the system. Now at this point of tight disclosure, you have the highest pressure. At this point, sometimes something can occur called sonoluminescence. Sonoluminescence occurs when you get a flash of light when a cavitation bubble is collapsing. Now, as much as I want to believe this is sonoluminescence, I'm pretty sure it's just a really cool reflection from the sunlight above the pool. But it's still really interesting that it occurs at the point of collapse. I wonder why that's happening. Okay, there's something else we need to talk about. This is my favorite shot. Originally, I thought that the first gases out of the barrel were from where the bullet exits and the expanding gases from the cartridge float around it. But look again. Do you see that black color traveling down the length of the bubble? That's the burnt gunpowder being released from the barrel behind the bullet. So if you follow that powder down the bubble, it should line up with that bullet. Yeah, there it is. So what's the first white cloud then? If you have a flowing liquid and you speed it up, the pressure of that fluid drops. Now it seems a little bit backwards from how it should be, but this is what happens. It's called the Bernoulli principle, where flow is high, pressure is low. So let's look at this phase diagram for water. The water we were in was about 4 degrees Celsius and about 1 atmosphere. If we drop the pressure of the water below a certain point, the water turns to vapor. The inside of the barrel was full of water before we shot, right? And so the bullet pushed it out at a very high speed. So where flow is high, pressure's low. Cavitation is happening in the barrel on the front side of the bullet. I'm still trying to wrap my head around this, but there it is. You can actually see it in the video. Once the bullet punches out of this cavitation cloud, something else is happening. You'll notice that the bubble on the right looks like a cloud and the bubble on the left looks more like glass. Andrew David Hazy took some awesome shadow graphs of bullets in flight which show the shock wave on the front of the bullet. The area behind the shock wave is lower in pressure. It turns to vapor. Because this low pressure region has a smoother flow boundary, it looks more like glass instead of the fuzzy cloud look caused by the turbulent flow coming out of the barrel. So there you have it. You're not just shooting a bullet out of this gun, you're shooting three different things. Now that we understand the physics behind cavitation, you can clearly see the effects of each of these three components in the high speed video. Oh yeah, and we also understand bubble bounce now too, don't we? So a huge thank you to Gavin and Dan the Man from the Slow Mo Guys. They came all the way to Alabama to help me shoot this video. That's a pretty big deal. So we redid a video on their channel, something I did a while back, Pistols Underwater, only we used the V1610. It's awesome. Go check it out on their channel. It's totally worth your time. On my channel, the intent here was to make an awesome video that you enjoyed and you also learned something and perhaps earn your subscription. So if you think I got close, we got a little chemistry going on, check out part three of this video, Russian Frogman Guns. Yeah, they exist. So I got my hands on some of those. I still have the Ninja Scope 3000 or whatever we're going to call that thing. Kind of see where this is going. Anyway, I'm Destin. You get smarter every day. Have a good one. So we actually selected this pool for a reason. Jimmy Neutron lives in the middle of nowhere, so if the bullet got away from us, everybody downrange would be safe. Please be smart. Don't try this. So check out how he cuts the glass. Huh? What? What did he just do? Get away from my computer, get away from my computer. All right, we got the bullets. There was no damage, but you can definitely see the grooves from the rifling in the barrel. 